Today we're going to talk a little bit about my Grand Design Reflection 303 RLS. This is a 2022 model with a build date of November 2021. Today we're going to walk through the process of installing my Lippert Insight backup camera. We'll go through how to get it set up how to connect it to the one control app so i am assuming that you already have the one control app installed and running and we'll talk about some issues that people have installing this camera before we can actually get to installing the camera we need to make sure we have 12 volt power a simple way to get power to that camera uh, when you're not connected to your tow vehicle and also a great troubleshooting tool is to pick up just it would be the tow vehicle side of a seven pin connector so i got this one bought it online i'll actually put a link to where i got it in the description this being the tow vehicle side of a seven pin connector what we want to do is tie the top two pins together so the top pin on the left which is pin number three, which is marker lights and tail lights. And the top pin on the right, pin number four, which is your auxiliary 12 volt power supply. This diagram shows you a side by side comparison of both the truck and the trailer side. So when we take this connector apart, and I've already loosened up the screws, the way that it was sitting in there was just like that. So this one would be our marker lights. And this one over here would be the auxiliary 12 volt side. So if you'll notice, what I did is simply took a jumper from the 12 volt auxiliary side over to my running lights so that when I plug this into the trailer, I'm going to I'm going to supply a constant 12 volts to my running lights. What that'll do is it'll keep my running lights on and doing so, I can turn that camera on, connect the camera. This is a really good tool to test um if you're having issues getting that camera to connect, if you're having issues getting your lights to come on with the truck, um Simply unplug from the truck, plug this connector into the seven pin on the trailer and your running lights will turn on and you should be able to get that camera to connect. When I install my new adapter onto the seven pin connector, What should happen, you can see that clearance light turned on. All of my clearance lights should turn on. My tail lights will also be on. Hopefully you can see That light right below my camera is on, which means my camera should have power at that point. The last thing that we want to do before we attempt to connect to this camera is document the SSID number. So if you look at the picture of the camera, this one is INSIGHT, all caps, underscore, 8516A7. We'll need that information when we go to set up the camera. I'll be installing or configuring this camera on my iPad. The process would be virtually the same for any smartphone or tablet. Start by going to settings and select Wi-Fi. Once you're on the Wi-Fi screen, locate the network named after your camera. In my case, it's insight underscore 8516A7. Select that network 
and make sure it connects. Next we'll open the One Control app and you'll notice that there is no camera displayed at this time. Click on the plus icon at the top of the screen to begin the process of adding the camera. When this screen appears, click on camera and a screen something like this should appear. You can attempt to scan the barcode and automatically set the camera up, but I'll tell you, I have never had that work on my camera. At this point, I select connect manually at the bottom of the screen. Then you'll see a screen that asks for ID and password. In the ID box, put the SSID number that you got from your camera. In my case, it's insight underscore 8516A7. Be sure to leave the password blank the first time you set this up. Then you should see a screen that says you were successful in connecting. Click continue at that point. At that point, an image from your camera should appear on the screen with a prompt indicating that you need to put in a password. Go ahead and put your password in. If you don't get the prompt to change your password, go back to the one control screen. You should see camera now. Go ahead and click on the camera and the prompt will come up along with the picture from the camera. This is the picture that shows up when I turn on my backup camera. I have a shed relatively close behind my trailer. So this is what I see. Not a great picture, but it does work. At the top of the screen, you have some icons that offer different functions. The lock simply allows you to make changes to the settings. The I to toggle backup assist lines. You can kick on, click on the camera to switch to monitor mode. You can turn the sound on and off, or you can click on the gear to enter settings. In the settings menu, you have the option to change different aspects of the picture color and contrast and things like that. You can also flip the view so that you see a mirror image. Um, there's a couple of different options there. And then you can change your password. A couple of things that people tend to have an issue with on this camera are first the antenna. You'll probably need to do some adjusting. You can see mine is tilted towards the back just a little bit. It is an omnidirectional antenna but I had to play with mine a little bit to get any kind of decent connectivity. The other thing is the 12 volt supply coming from your tow vehicle. Some of the newer tow vehicles use a pulse width modulation signal and that doesn't give you either enough power to the camera or it causes some interference. So make sure you check to see that you are getting the proper 12 volt supply. If you're not, there are some adapters available you can purchase. If you're having trouble connecting to your camera or you are connected and forgot your password, there is a process for resetting. On the bottom of the camera is this little button that according to the instructions, you press that button and hold it down for 15 seconds. When you do that, and it's really hard to see, the uh, after about 15 seconds, those four little LEDs should light up and turn red. It's almost impossible to see them turn red in the daylight. After they do, you'll need to disconnect from shore power, disconnect your battery, remove the seven pin connector, and wait two minutes for the camera to reset itself. After that, you'll need to go in and reset your password and probably set the camera up again. The Wi-Fi signal coming from this camera is mediocre at best. If you're having trouble connecting, Check the Wi-Fi signal on the device that you're attempting to connect. You should have probably minimum two bars in order to establish a good connection. When checking for signal strength, I turn on the sound from the camera and walk around the RV. As soon as the sound starts to cut out, I know that I've reached the maximum distance for connectivity. At that point, I'll generally go back and mess with that antenna until I can get the most distance out of this camera. Before wrapping up this video, I want to make sure everybody understands that this is a backup camera uh, designed 
for when you're traveling less than five miles an hour. It is not a camera that works well going down the road. This is also, at best, a mediocre camera. It has a relatively poor signal, a relatively poor picture, um, and this is not a camera that I would recommend if you're looking to buy one. All right, that wraps up this video on the Lippert Insight Backup Camera. Thanks for watching.